Merci beaucoup. Vous pouvez entendre Parfaitement. Ok. Euh, je vais faire ma présentation en anglais parce que il euh, y a des matières techniques, euh, donc euh, je vais changer maintenant. Um, this week uh, was our national day, uh, St. Patrick's took place on the 17th, two days ago. Um, and it is in fact an unusual national vous, day. Si vous, permettez, in... si vous me permettez un instant, parce que euh, je vois l'équipe d'interprétation ici. On n'en a pas ah. Un instant, okay. s'il vous plaît, on règle ça tout de suite. Madame l'ambassadeur, vous en aurez besoin C'est bon. Okay. Peut-être que je peux commencer okay. un petit peu en français. You can... Non, 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 um... you, can, you can go ahead now. Ok, ok. Well, this Wednesday, on the 17th of March, we celebrated our National Day, St. Patrick's Day, which is unusual because... It is celebrated in many countries around the world because of the size of our diaspora. We are a country of around 5 million people, and we have a diaspora which is estimated to be around 70 million. Um, so there are 14 times more members of the diaspora who claim Irish ancestry than there are people living in Ireland. And this is explicitly recognized in our national constitution, which states that uh, the, uh, in its Article 2, that uh, Ireland, uh, the Irish nation cherishes its special affinity with people of Irish ancestry living abroad who share in its cultural identity and heritage. So by way of background, therefore, For us, the diaspora is an enormous resource. Um, we have, in the ministry, we have a section dedicated to diaspora relations. Um, the most important part of our work is to support and strengthen diaspora communities around the world. So we provide funding. Um, this year, it will be about 13 million euros. And this goes on a variety of projects committed by diaspora groups around the world, um, I think in about 50 countries. Um, and uh, they work with our network of diplomatic missions um, to promote culture, heritage, Irish sports, music, uh, la our language. Um, around the world. And this, the strength of those Irish communities and the work that they do is in, essential because they promote Ireland. They, by engaging in um, sort of cultural, musical, uh, traditional activities, they are creating a visibility for Ireland that we could not as diplomats do on our own. Um, we also support network development. So groups like women in business, um, academic uh, and research networks are also important parts of the investment we make in our diaspora communities. Um, we recognize that There are important challenges that we need in future outreach to our diaspora. We have to strengthen our engagement with younger members of the diaspora, especially those who are third or fourth generation diaspora, for whom the connection is already quite distant. Um, and we also know that we need to adopt an inclusive approach, recognizing that many members of our diaspora have Irish as one of their um, familial or traditional backgrounds. They may say in America also have Hispanic or African American or Asian um, diasporic uh, connections as well. So we need to ensure that we reach out and say that we're not looking 
for people who identify only as Irish, but may also feel partially Irish and partially something else. Um, so there, there are many different aspects to that. And I think that we are, in November of last year, our government adopted a new national diaspora strategy, which sets out a roadmap and, and a level of ambition for new initiatives um, that we must undertake, uh, including in particular the focus on diversity and inclusion, on a digital outreach to people who are not very engaged, um, as, well, as well as strengthening the dialogue and outreach to people who have a limited affinity with uh, Ireland, for whom the connection is not very strong. Um, at a national level, uh, we have a minister for the diaspora who works in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, who chairs a national coordination group of all government departments and a number of government offices that have international um, responsibilities. Um, we also have a program uh, to support returning immigrants, because at this point, our the numbers of people coming back to Ireland and the numbers leaving Ireland can be close. It can be about 30,000 uh, going out, 30,000 coming back every year. Um, so we provide support through our national information services um, for people returning to Ireland on things like how to uh, apply for benefits, how to get their children to school, uh, how to uh, apply for um, taxation credits, these kind of things. We also have a special program which is funded by my team, um, which supports people who are coming back from abroad with business experience in starting up new enterprises. Um, because many people who have been abroad for some years have uh, unique experiences because of that international life and uh, they have skills that are uh, very useful but frequently they lack uh, particular um, networks that their peers who are in Ireland uh, don't have so they, they are they're not very well connected they don't know who to ask for taxation advice or uh, labor uh, law advice these kind of things so we, we support we do that um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Obviously, this is a very wide range of activities, and uh, there is much for us to learn, but we are also happy to share what we can uh, from our national experience. Thank you.